I feel like I'm missing something. Ah! Spinning is so much cooler than not spinning, but I'm still missing something. Much better. And now I just need more. Nice. So I'm gonna start with the plasma gun and I'm gonna cut off the coil that's on top. I'm gonna cut off the little tabs on both sides as well because I've actually modeled that into the 3D model. The way to really get this done is take a lot of light cuts with a really sharp blade. I'm just gonna go slow. I'm gonna keep trial fitting with the plasma coil and I'm just gonna be as careful as I can. Once I'm to the point where the plasma coil is starting to fit, I'm gonna pull out a file and use the file and the X-Acto knife to kind of get my final fit. And once I get a fit that I'm happy with, I'm gonna come in with a chisel. This chisel is meant for panel lining on Gundams, but it is a really nice tool to have. So now we're gonna come in and put this channel in here so the LEDs have somewhere to go. I'm gonna come back and forth and just take it nice and slow, take out small chips to get to where I'm trying to go. Now that I've channel cut in here, it's time to go to the microscope. This is an 0402 LED. This is a quarter for size comparison. Onto the wire. This is 34 gauge or 0.18 millimeter epoxy coated. So that just needs to get scraped off so that I can solder it. I'm putting down some Kapton tape. This way I have something to hold the LEDs in place, provided I have all of the polarities in the same direction to solder these in parallel. So now I'm gonna tape the top and the bottom of the wires down so that the wires don't move while I'm trying to solder them. And I'm gonna add some solder paste. Solder paste is basically suspended spheres of solder in flux. So I don't need to add any flux to this. I can just touch the soldering iron pretty much to the wire and the wire will carry the heat to the LEDs. LEDs are very heat sensitive and these are so small that the traditional soldering technique where you heat up the pads and add solder is just gonna burn up the LEDs. And a little touch, touch here, a little touch, touch there. You can see all the solder just starting to wet onto the pads. It does not take much. This isn't even sped up. This is real time. Once the solder joints are done, we're gonna come in with a little test and then some alcohol to clean off any of that excess flux. Then come in here and nip the tip. Now that I've suffered through doing that nine more times, I'm back at the table and we're gonna go ahead and put these into the plasma gun that I've now glued the barrel tip to. I have a channel for the LEDs. Now I need a hole for the wires to go through. So it's drill time. I've just put my pin vise into a cheap hand drill. This is saves a lot of time from doing this just all by hand with the pin vise. Key with this is to go slow and clear chips often. Just doing a final fit and finish. Want to make sure that I don't have any ugly surprises when I'm trying to put the LEDs in or when I'm trying to epoxy on the plasma coil. And here we go. Let's test this LED, make sure it still works and figure out the polarity. This is an LED tester on this nine volt that runs constant current so the LEDs don't explode. After spending so much time soldering all these, I really don't want to make them explode. That would be bad. And now it's time to thread the wire through this whole model. I'm going to make sure that I have this entire model threaded before I start gluing anything and give the LEDs one more test to make sure everything's still working before I actually glue everything in place. And now we have everything laced through. It's going from the gun to the front chest plate, through the hip, and down through the leg. Time to mix up some five minute epoxy. I'm gonna use the same resin dye in here so I can use that kind of as a gap filler to make sure that this plasma coil is filling the whole space. And I'm just gonna come in with a toothpick to ply this and I'm actually gonna put this directly on the LEDs. That'll help keep them in place and also diffuse the light a little bit. Now we're gonna put the plasma coil in here, make sure it's nice and clean and walk away and let this set up. 
Now it's all set up and I've glued him together. So we're going to go ahead and give this guy one more test before I do anything else to make sure that nothing weird happened when I glued them all together. So this is the battery holder that I plan to use. I've soldered a little switch on the side here so I can turn these on and off without having to take the battery out. I've used the jeweler's saw to cut the base to hold the battery in the battery holder. I'm going to come up with some shims here just to get the clearance for this battery holder to make sure that it is all good. And these are one millimeter thick. All right, now I'm going to take some plastic glue here and I'm going to glue all of the shims in place so that I can put this top plate on. So I have actually a structure built for the battery holder to actually glue into. Once I'm satisfied with all of the shims being glued into place, I'm going to come in with a top plate. This is half millimeter plastic card. We're going to cut this down to size, and I'm not going to worry too much about covering the whole base because I'm going to put some texture on here anyway, so it'll be hidden. Now that's all in place, we're going to go ahead and set this aside and let that dry. So I've hooked up a bus wire to one side here, and on this side here, I'm going to add a resistor to the switch. Because the switch and the pins on it are so small, I'm going to use some solder paste. That way I can keep the temperature low and not burn it up. And for the resistor, I'm using a 56 ohm resistor. 56 is quite a bit more than I actually need, but because I'm using three, I don't want them at full brightness. And once that's on, I'm gonna drill a hole in the base and go ahead and glue the guy on. Here's that done. So I have the wires sticking out the bottom here. So I need to go ahead and make sure I know which one's which, and I'm using the actual battery through the resistor on this to do the testing. Now it's a matter of scraping off the insulation so I can solder it to the resistor lead and I can solder it to the bus wire lead that I have on either side of this battery. Once the insulation's gone, I'm actually gonna wrap it around this lead here so I can have a nice, good, solid solder joint. And when I'm done with that, that's just gonna get pushed into the base here. For the other side, I need to route the wire around the battery before I start stripping it to make sure that I have enough wire to get to the other side. And now that I see that the light is actually turning on, I'm going to turn the switch off before I do the soldering. You just come in with a little speed soldering here. And once all the soldering is done, I'm going to come in and trim the ends off here. I ended up coming back later and actually tucking all of these wires in and backfilling them with green stuff so they'd stay in place. And there we have it. There's one done. Here we go with 10 ready to go for the table. I'm gonna cover these techniques more in depth in a series of basic skills to help you expand into the wonderful world of electronics and miniatures. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching.